demands my soul, my life, my all. In the name of Jesus, amen. Jesus never did get his drink, did he? He asked for it. It wasn't too much to ask for, but he never does get it. By the end of the story, he's still waiting. But it's okay, because Jesus' intention always is more interested in giving than receiving. And as he often does, he has a way of asking for those things that actually you and I ought to be asking for. It's his not-so-subtle way of reminding us of what we don't need until he tells us. We beg him for salt, but he gives us water. We ask him for a serpent, but he gives us a fish. He says to the woman, if you knew, if you really knew the gift of God, who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Amazing. How our Jesus shows us what we really need, and he gives it to us as well. If you knew the gift of God, if we knew that, nothing else would really matter, would it? We would see that in him we have everything. In Jesus, you have everything you need. Take our life, goods, fame, child, and wife. Take our church, our salary, our livelihood. Take what they may. They have nothing won. The living water is ours forever. If you knew the gift of God, you would laugh. You would laugh at the pile of successes that you have heaped up for yourselves. If you knew the gift of God, you'd let the world condemn you for your five husbands or five wives or 500 other skeletons that you've crammed into your closets. For you have love that is true from the one who has taken all of those skeletons and burned them down to ashes in the flames of his love. If you knew the gift of God, you would reject the poison that has pushed your direction day after day from the bartender of Hades, and you would instead find your thirst quenched in that one place, the fountain of living water. It's cascading from his side, the side of his upraised body, the temple destroyed for you but rebuilt in three days. If you really knew. One greater than Jacob is here. One greater than that man whose name was used to name the well. The patriarch who worked seven, no, 14 years to gain his lovely Rachel. But our Jacob worked harder, longer. He worked to death. To wed those made so ugly by sin that they would make homely Leah seem like a trophy bride. He labored to gain Miss Samaritan, our new friend. And Gomer and Jezebel and you, their twin sisters, as his wife, the bride of Christ. Our Jacob loved this church and gave himself up for her that he might make her stunning And beautiful, having cleansed her by the washing of living water that issued from the new and better Eden, that trickle that is now a rushing flood, giving us new life. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all, you might ask, but you are, is the answer, flesh of flesh and bone of bone with Jesus, with Jacob. There's a history, there's a history behind all these words, a history at the waters of these wells. It was a well, is it a well where God's people often found their brides to be. 
And though, no, it's not this woman that Jesus marries. It's the bride of Christ. She is included within the body of Christ, even as you are no less. Five husbands. We don't know the story. In some ways, it's none of our business. Maybe she had been divorced. Maybe she had been windowed or abandoned. Who knows? In some ways, it doesn't matter. But Jesus is there to complete her. The man she is with now is not her husband. That would be number six. But the Bible always points us forward to number seven, who is the one who completes us. If you remember, several months ago, at the beginning of the church year, we had Matthew's genealogy, and you have six sets of seven there, and that points us then, where is it? Where's the seventh seven? It's Jesus. And the woman here, the Samaritan, who's an outsider, is included because Jesus is the one she really needs most desperately. Sometimes couples come to me or kids have questions even and they wonder about love and other things. And one of, one of the things that I have learned and I've shared is if you run after Jesus, follow Jesus First and foremost, the other people that you need in your life, God will provide. You put the relationship with God first, everything else fits in. Get the other relationships above your relationship with God, and everything gets messed up, even if you have good intentions. We have Jesus as the one who quenches our thirst. The one who gives us not just flowing water, but life, life. It's a reference there, Old Testament reference to God himself. The life giver who is our life. He is our life. We drink from the well of salvation he's dug with his own hands. We dine at his table and drink from his cup. You to whom Jesus has pledged his undying love love and fidelity. You are beautiful in his sight. The fairest of them all for its kisses of grace have healed your scars, brightened your eyes, transformed you from beast into beauty. That's who the body of Christ is. And all of us equally members of it, no matter who you are as a believer in Jesus. So we go to Jesus, Samaritans and Jews, one of all, and we ask him for living waters, and we find in him the one who knows what it means to thirst, real life, real life. If you knew the gift of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit who gives us faith, we do know this free gift. It said this unnamed Samaritan woman, after her conversation with Jesus, at this well, she went back into town. She told her fellow citizens about Jesus. She said, he told me everything I've ever done. And as a result, many Samaritans believed in him. Think of that, how God flipped the script. It was his to, be, uh, to begin with. But from her perspective, she probably never would have guessed that Jesus could have transformed her life. The people in that village then testified, this is indeed the Savior of the world. Jesus said it himself too, by the way. Did you catch it? Sometimes Christians and God himself gets criticism for Jesus supposedly not claiming to be Messiah. No, it's all over the place, and here's a direct reference to that. And the people claim it too. Well, after this, after this event, tradition goes on and says that this woman tirelessly went and told and retold and retold more and more people in her hometown, but also around the Roman Empire, what this Jesus had done. She became an evangelist. She became a missionary, even as God calls us each to share the good news, good news for each of our stories. 
It's even said that during the persecution of Christians under Nero, closer to 70 AD, that she spoke the gospel to Nero's daughter, who became a Christian. And then she died a death of a martyr by Nero's hand. If you only knew the gift of God, by his grace we do. By his grace we not only trust in the gifts that he gives us for this life, but also eternal life. I know the illustration I shared with the kids maybe seemed a little bit silly, but you can relate to that, can't you? In some more serious ways. Because it's not just salt that we pretend. It's, it's, that, it's that endless attempt to get right with God and through blood, sweat, and tears that we try and get with, right with God. All the while, Jesus saying, here is my free gift of life and forgiveness Take and drink. And then we try and, and, and pepper our, our lives with all sorts of other things. We try and spice up our lives with all sorts of other things to find satisfaction. And that doesn't work. Only Jesus. And then you click on your phone or you turn on Netflix and you see all the pleasures and the perversions of our world And though a million people claim to be followers of such things, Jesus is still offering to all people real forgiveness and freedom and life. If they only knew, through you, through you, God is sharing the good news. Dear Jesus, quench our thirst. Help us turn to you. Help us to trust in you. Help us to see in you the one who controls even creation and redemption. Jesus, be our living water this day. Quench our greatest needs, all our needs, and help us freely to share your love and forgiveness with all. In your name we pray, amen. The peace of God which surpasses understanding. Guard your hearts, guard your minds, guard your whole lives in Jesus, amen.